Coming up on Ag Week TV, we're at the 25th anniversary Dakota Fest with a look at the hot button ag policy issues. I'm Jenny Schlecht at Dakota Fest and we'll hear how South Dakota is doing with its first industrial hemp crop. Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack tours drought stricken Minnesota and talks drought assistance. And farmers are hit by the Minnesota based Pipeline Foods bankruptcy. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. This week we're in Mitchell, South Dakota, where Dakota Fest is celebrating its 25th anniversary. This farm show has grown substantially during that time and now boasts more than 400 exhibits with a nice mix of both crop and livestock products and services on display. Plus cattle shoot demos, panel speaking events, and networking among farmers and industry. South Dakota's congressional delegation provided an ag policy update at the Dakota Fest roundtables. Drought assistance, the fix to the cattle markets, taxes, and the infrastructure bill topped the list of issues among lawmakers and producers. Congressman Dusty Johnson says while the Senate finally passed an infrastructure bill, it faces a tough road in the House. I think it's pretty uncertain right now, to be honest with you. There's a lot of concern, both among the moderate Democrats and the Republicans, that at some point the Speaker is going to tie together the $1.2 trillion with the $3.5 trillion. And he says he'll oppose any efforts to increase taxes to pay for the bills. That's the problem, one of the many problems with $3.5 trillion, is that to pay for that, they do, uh, they get rid of stepped-up basis. They do bring the estate tax down. That stuff, that dog's just not going to hunt. Drought is also top of mind with producers, but Senator Mike Rounds doesn't think Congress will pass any major disaster relief. There will be minor modifications, but there's money out there floating through the process right now. It's a matter of whether or not some of the money is diverted to the programs that actually count. And cattle producers continue to call for a market fix. Senator John Thune says two hearings have shown more competition is needed, yet there is no quick or easy answer. Whether it's a, uh, a solution that comes from Congress that legislates something like that, a 50-14 proposal, or um, whether you can get uh, justice through packers and stockyards. In the end, I think it, it, it really is going to, there's going to have to be something done with the level of concentration there is in the meatpacking industry. The group also discussed the future of the RFS and climate change policy. Another panel discussion at Dakota Fest focused on hemp, as South Dakota is in its first year of growing the crop. Ag Week's Jenny Schleck moderated the panel and has more with two of the participants. Thanks, Michelle. I'm here with Derek Doman and Ken Meyer of the South Dakota Industrial Hemp Association. And Derek, you work with a lot of growers across the region. What do you think is important for them to learn as they're embarking on this new crop? Sure. I guess the number one thing that I've learned over the three years of being involved with this crop and growing it is uh, I can't stress enough education. I really encourage people to get on the internet, you know, really figure out what they want to do with this crop. If they want to produce it, if they want to find a niche market, like for instance, animal bedding, something like that. I mean, there's so many different things that people can do with it. Processing. So number one thing, educate yourself, figure out what you want to do and uh, ask around the industry. I mean, there's people there to help and answer these questions questions and help you succeed. That's what we want. And Ken, you work with uh, farmers or you're going to work with farmers for the first time this year on processing for CBD. What do they need to know before they approach you? Well, farmers are good about always doing their homework. And so most of the farmers that uh, have CBD uh, hemp uh, biomass that they would like us to process have already been talking to us. The good thing overall is that in South Dakota we do have the start of a processing industry uh, for all three sectors, for grain, fiber, and CBD oil, so it's a great start. Thanks Ken and Derek. For more information visit sd-hemp.com. At Dakota Fest this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. Thanks Jenny. U.S. Ex Secretary Tom Vilsack and several other state officials paid a visit to southeast Minnesota to see how drought is affecting producers in the state and to offer what they can do to help. Noah Fish has more in this week's Ag Week cover story. I've been feeding hay that we normally store for winter. We should be knee high in third crop hay right now. Chip Callister raises crops and cattle in southeast Minnesota. He irrigates his crops but not his pastures and that could be a problem come winter. I'll probably chop you know some silage and that'll that'll 
help me out a great deal. U.S. Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack came to Callister Farms to get a look at the drought conditions, hear about what farmers need, and tell them what help is available to producers. The farmer can do everything he or she can do, but if Mother Nature doesn't cooperate, there's only so much uh, the farmer can do. And that's why it's important for us to have these programs. Phil Sack was joined by Minnesota Ag Commissioner Tom Peterson and Senators Amy Klobuchar and Tina Smith, all pledging help. Making sure that all of our ranchers and farmers know about what's out there for them right now um, from their FFA agents and from their insurance um, insurance people. But perhaps more importantly, Vilsack says, are long-term solutions to climate change. More intense storms, uh, longer droughts, wildfires. Our system isn't really designed to provide the level of help and assistance for these long-term challenges that farmers and ranchers and producers face. In Cannon Falls, Minnesota, this is Noah Fish for Ag Week. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. North Dakota Senator John Hoven has also been meeting with producers to get feedback on existing drought assistance. Hoven is working to secure $6.28 billion in disaster relief in the Senate Ag Appropriations Bill. This would expand the WIP Plus program to include 2020 and 2021 disasters. It would also provide $750 million for livestock producers. But some say that won't go far with pastures depleted and hay prices climbing. You know, that's like one month. A cow will eat that much money in a month. And, and we're in August, and there are already pe people feeding cows up there. The Risk Management Agency is also providing flexibility on adjusting crops that won't make it by leaving a strip if they are hayed or grazed for livestock. The future of energy policy remains uncertain, especially with the push for electric cars. In fact, in Minnesota, Governor Tim Walz is pushing a clean car standard like California's. Biofuels groups say it doesn't make sense with the success of biofuels, including the state's 20% biodiesel mandate. We have proven ourselves that it's a good renewable fuel and it, and it works with what they want to get rid of carbon. Why aren't we using more of that? Why aren't we going to 50%? Why aren't we going to B100? However, the governor's plan includes other energy sources. The governor has also been very supportive of, uh, uh, of renewable fuels, as that has to be a piece of the mix. And so that's why we had a major legislative initiative this year to help build out that infrastructure. Cliff Kaler with Novel Energy Solutions says other green alternatives must also be included. You know, in 10 to 15 years, it's going to be most all solar, wind, and hydro with a few natural gas uh, plants as, as peakers. Kaler says the biggest obstacle is building out the grid. Ahead on Ag Week TV from Dakota Fest, some farmers are out millions of dollars after a Minnesota grain company suddenly goes bankrupt. Superior Grain Equipment offers you the industry's best dryer and grain handling equipment. So make the superior choice and get higher quality grains, test weights, and prices while using half the energy. Superior Grain Equipment. At Trans Systems, every day is a great day to haul beets. Our family-owned business moves more beets than anyone in the world. We enjoy good work and good pay, and many of us have been here for decades. Because it's a place where our opinions are heard and our accomplishments are seen. We're your home every day and can take summers off. Here, our safety and yours matter most. Trans Systems, a sweet haul in the Red River Valley since 1983. You've worked your entire life for this. Through the ups and downs, you've stood strong, building a legacy to be proud of. With all good things in this world, there are still risks. It's a part of life. You need protection you can count on. We're not just here to insure your equipment, your vehicles, or your home. We're here to protect everything you've built. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area.
Superior Grain Equipment is committed to quality and service. Protect your bottom line and your future with superior quality, protection, and reliability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. What can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvests. Welcome back to Dakota Fest. There are more than 430 vendors at this year's show. We caught up with a few of them during the three-day event. Reeves Buildings is a locally owned family operated company that's been in business for 49 years. What sets us apart is really our engineered strength of our building. We're also a fully customizable building company, so you bring your plans to us and because we manufacture all of our trusses, we can really provide you with the actual building package that you want and need for your operation, your commercial buildings, your barn dominiums, um, anything you want, we'll build it. The South Dakota Association of County Weed and Pest Boards told us the drought has made weed control more difficult, but fall applications are important. It's made weed control a challenge all the way across the board just because we haven't had any um, consistent rains where you could actually have and say that yes, this is a good fall to do some good control. A lot of those weeds, if they're not good and actively growing this fall, they're not going to take in any herbicides. So it's really going to be a challenge. It's going to be very spotty. A huge jump in steel prices and industry-wide delays in acquiring materials hasn't slowed down superior grain bins. We really ramped up for th this year before things got crazy. You know, we, could, we were able to see that that market was going to go kind of nuts and we weren't, there was so much uncertainty, we got in early. So we're still sitting good on bins. We can get uh, grain bins to farmers. You know, there are some pockets that are, they're looking at some good crops. We still can get you a bin and get them up. And American National Insurance has been around since 1905 and specializes in ag and ag related coverage. At American National, a couple things we do differently than our competition or other insurance companies is, say you have your combine out on the farm and you run a rock or something into it and it tears it up. We'll replace all of that. There is no limit. Another thing we do is we have some endorsements on our policy where we can make that policy fit exactly for you. For example, if you go rent a piece of equipment, we have $250,000 of coverage automatically on your policy uh, to cover that until you get a chance to give us a call. Dozens of farmers in at least three states are owed millions of dollars from a bankrupt grain company. Pipeline Foods of Fridley, Minnesota filed bankruptcy in July, leaving many of their non-GMO and organic producers with no grain and no money. Michael Pates has more on this complex case. Where is that money at today? Okay, that's a question that needs to be answered in my mind. Farmer Brian Herb says he was completely blindsided by the bankruptcy. Pipeline owes his family nearly $350,000 for non-GMO grain that they were acquiring, essentially with IOUs, months after executives knew they were in financial trouble. He's incensed that they were taking in grain they wouldn't pay for right up to the end. And I can't stress enough the impact, the ripple effect that somebody in that position that keeps going on in what looks like extremely normal situations to the farmers, but yet well knowing that they're not going to pay for that last grain that they're bringing in because of their financial situation. Chris and Andrea Kohler raised organic corn and soybeans for pipeline on a 183 acre farm. They're owed $82,000. Just assume that they were a stand-up company, so this is completely was a surprise to us. The full scope of the case isn't clear, but Pipeline has asked the judge in Delaware to allow them to liquidate nearly $30 million in grain inventories, primarily to pay off secured creditors, not farmers who delivered it. The bills keep coming in and wondering where, where the money's gonna come from. The judge allowed only Minnesotans in the case to sell stored grain to other buyers before it spoils. Andrea Kohler said that's a godsend, and she wants to make sure farmers are aware of what contracts they're signing when it's cash, and when it's a credit sale. Well, it's uh, affected our farm tremendously. In Hope, Minnesota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. Still ahead from Dakota Fest, we'll have information for controlling weeds after your small grain harvest.
They say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. Growing up as a kid, Gateway was always the grain bin building and the grain handling people that were out in our area. One of the reasons we chose to go with Gateway was they're the leader in the industry and they are the number one Brock dealer in the United States. We've really liked the Brock design and some of the designs that Gateway has come up with throughout the years. My best advice would be to just push your trust in them and let them uh, come up with the design that's going to fit your needs. Hi neighbor! I know you didn't ask me to, but I grabbed your mail for you while you were out of town. Uh, this one was marked urgent, so I opened it for you. It's your bank statement. Are all those charges right? I highlighted the bottom of page three, where you can sign up for e-statements. This isn't my mail. <laughs> e-statements with Cornerstone Bank. Keep nosy neighbors at bay by switching today. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009 with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. We've had a little shift in the weather pattern recently. What will that mean for moisture prospects in the region? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. General outlook of the weather in the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, Southern Canada. We're starting to see some signs of the end of this long, hot summer. Not only is the weather pattern beginning to look a little more like early fall, you're going to see the results. Plus, if you look at the it, logistically, this two-week forecast takes us into the first four days of September. So we really are very nearly there. That being said, uh, the weather will be cooling down. There will be a few more thunderstorms, as there usually are at the end of summer. I don't see a lot of wide spread rain. And then as we look also to the tropics, there will be an uptick in tropical action. Of course, that is unlikely to affect most of the Northern Plains Upper Midwest Corn Belt. It looks like, though, there will be some tropical moisture affecting many areas of the southern and eastern United States. So as we enter this period, we're just a few days removed from a round of thunderstorms and rain in the northern plains. That system has gone up toward Hudson Bay. Hot weather rebuilding throughout the central plains, but not really getting up into North Dakota, South Dakota, not much of Minnesota, much of the Corn Belt. Looking at weather in the 80s and some 70s even as we start off the week, the really hot weather will be much further south, and it will have a tendency to sag southward as we go through the week. A little shot of cool weather coming down into southern Canada, parts of Montana. That's quickly going to get rebuffed it'll be pushed back in fact some warm temperatures building up in those areas but another little trough will be coming in and that'll bring another wave of cool the south this time of year typically it's just like summer in fact some parts of texas september and august are the two hottest months of the year same thing for south florida and much of the southeastern united states so these areas are going to be extremely hot but as we get into the end of summer and the early part of september you start seeing intrusions of i call it more pre-fall weather and there will be some cold weather in fact some freezing weather that'll be way up in the higher latitudes but it's just kind of up there sticking its little nose onto our map from time to time the second week of this period we start off with a ridge in the west little trough of cooler weather moving through minnesota and the great lakes that translates out a shot of the coldest weather of the fall so far building into the areas west of hudson bay and some pretty cool temps down in through uh, the northern rockies of canada there may even be some uh, frost 
frost in some of that area. I don't think it'll get into the United States. But there will be some very cool weather while the south remains quite hot. Storms, rainy action will be uh, most solid along the eastern seaboard. There may be a tropical system affecting parts of the northeast this first week. The second week, the best the models are suggesting something along the western gulf coast that's really too far to know but it does look like the northern plains will be somewhere between dry to very dry to maybe spotty showers and storms but not a lot of widespread rain so overall most of the northern plains upper midwest still suffering from drought we're not looking for much drought relief regarding rainfall they say when the going gets tough the tough get going at OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Egg Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. The small grain harvest is underway in the region, but the battle against weeds is far from over. Farmers should be thinking about the consequences for next year's soybeans and other crops if this year's weeds go uncontrolled. NDSU Extension Weed Specialist Joe Eichley says with the dry conditions, he's been seeing a lot of glyphosate-resistant water hemp and kochia. He says there's plenty of time left in the season for those weeds to regrow after being cut off or still germinate and produce seed if it rains. Eichley says it's important to take action now to set up for better weed control next year, especially kochia, which thrives in dry conditions. A single plant can produce 15,000 seeds in just a few weeks. And the fewer weed seeds growers have to face next year, the better the chance of season-long weed control. So we have a situation where we have you know, another 30, maybe 60 days until a frost. And so we have this long period where we should think about controlling these weeds to set us up for better weed control next year because we don't want to have those, those weeds that survive go on and produce more seed to add into our seed bank. For more information about weed control after small grain harvest, contact your local extension agent. The Iowa State Fair wrapped up this weekend in Des Moines after a hiatus last year due to COVID. The fair featured livestock, crops, and horticulture exhibits from 4-H FFA and open class exhibitors. Add in great food, the famous butter sculptures, and even the state's largest pumpkin. Ex Secretary Mike Nag says it's a great platform to educate the nearly one million consumers in attendance about the state's number one industry. We, we really bring together urban and rural. If you did, grew up on a farm or you didn't grow up on a farm, 
you're here experiencing this together. There's a shared experience. And you know, Iowa's state fair is an agriculture fair, and, and we work hard to ensure that it remains that way. Nag showed in the 39th Governor's Charity Steer Show to raise money for the Ronald McDonald houses. The winning steer was owned by Lane Elmquist of Audubon. Still ahead, some ideas for making the most of your fresh garden produce. At Trans Systems, every day is a great day to haul beets. Our family-owned business moves more beets than anyone in the world. We enjoy good work and good pay, and many of us have been here for decades because it's a place where our opinions are heard and our accomplishments are seen. We're your home every day and can take summers off. Here, our safety and yours matter most. Trans Systems, a sweet haul in the Red River Valley since 1983. Challenges, we all face them at some time, but it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. This is the time of year many of us look forward to produce fresh from the garden. Kristen Clark, the Iowa farmer who writes the Food and Swine blog, is also a monthly Ag Week magazine columnist and shares videos on agweek.com. This week she shows off her first garden and shares a delicious recipe for fresh cucumbers and tomatoes. Go to agweek.com to check it out. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV here from Dakota Fest. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have yourself a great and safe week. <laughs>